terror attacks on September 11th of 2001, Frank Silicia was uh, working to excavate the rubble at Ground Zero. Frank had been working around the clock. He was physically exhausted, he was emotionally drained, and then he saw it. Standing upright, kind of at an angle, he was drained with the destruction, the debris of destruction, and yet it was clearly identifiable. There was a priest also working in the wreckage that day. His name was Father Brian Jordan. Blessing remains. Offering comfort, prayer to the workers. And he was just barely hanging on. So Frank went to find him. Asked him to come and see what he had found. It took a minute, but then Father Brian, he said, Oh my God, I see it. Standing in the rubble was a 17-foot iron cross. It was a massive TV that the explosions, the fire, the destruction had shaped into a cross. A few days later, Father Brian enlisted the help of some union workers, found a crane operator, and together they lifted the cross out of the rubble and put it on a concrete stand. Then Father Brian blessed it. And that cross became a center of worship for the people there. For 10 months, Father Brian held a worship service every Sunday right in the shadow of that cross. People would come to that cross to pray. Families of those who perished came to the cross to seek comfort. The workers often found their rest there. And when the people on the site were just worn out with grief, they went to the cross. Come to me, all of you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Those are the words of Jesus in Matthew 11, verse 28. And that is our gospel lesson for the day. The power of God through the cross calls to us to come, to lay down our burdens, and to find God's peace. Let's pray. Father God, give me a voice this day, God. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, God, our rock, our Savior, our Redeemer. Amen. The World Trade Center cross was moved over to St. Peter's Church as the memorial was built there at Ground Zero. The plans for the memorial included a central location for the cross, and of course, the atheists fought it tooth and nail. They said that it was an ugly piece of wreckage. They said that it was repugnant. They said that it connoted horror and death. To some extent, what they said was true. It's pretty much what they said 2,000 years ago when they saw a cross. That it was an ugly instrument of capital punishment. That the cross was repugnant to all but the cruelest sensibilities. And indeed the cross was associated with the horror of an ugly and prolonged death. The cross was not unique to the Romans. Persians, Carthaginians, Macedonians also used crucifixion to punish and deter. But in Rome, Crucifixion was reserved for the worst of the criminals. The Romans had perfected the process. They did not crucify petty shoplifters or petty criminals, but they did make a very public spectacle of executing the worst criminals in order to deter others from crime. And so death on a cross was a scandal for the entire family. It was a shameful way to die. And also it was a symbol of the power of Rome to take a life. It was also a sign of the powerlessness of the people to resist Roman law. To even consider, to even contemplate that the crucifixion of a person could bring redemption or salvation to a people would be foolishness. It would be shocking. 
And so Paul wrote that the Jews demanded a sign, but not this sign. Paul wrote that the Greeks looked for wisdom, but they sure didn't look for wisdom there at Calvary. The world's wisdom could not encompass God's wisdom. The world's wisdom could never, ever explain such a sacrifice. And so any association of redemption with the cross would be foolishness to those who look to this world for their own self-image, to those who seek out idols to worship, to those who believe that science has all the answers, to those who are perishing, the message of the cross is incomprehensible. But to those who are being saved, the message of the cross is central to our faith. The theology in the message, the very heart of the gospel proclamation is that through the sacrifice of Christ on the cross, God was reconciling sinners to Him. That instead of judgment and punishment for our sins, we could be forgiven, and in God's forgiveness, we could have hope, joy, and comfort, and peace. That we could have salvation. And so Paul says, we preach Christ crucified as the message of the cross. And all the theology, all the preaching, all the prayers, all the faith can be condensed down into that one simple image of the cross. The image that brings to mind all that God has done for us is the cross. The cross stands as a challenge to those who hate. The cross denies the power of violence. The cross confronts evil and wickedness. The cross defies injustice. Even as the cross brings to mind God's grace at work in our lives. In Paul's letter, he wrote that the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but for those who are being saved, it is the power of God. God's power in Jesus to walk to Jerusalem knowing full well that, that cross was waiting for him. God's power in us to face the trials and hurts of this world. But even so, even as we read Paul's words separating the foolish and the perishing from those who are being saved, there's something in those words that offer hope. There's something in those words that offers redemption to the perishing. There's something in those words that pierces the barriers, that breaches the boundaries of our foolishness and points to the possibility of a new way of life. And that something is God's power to transform us, to bring us new life, to raise us up out of the rubble. It's God's grace calling to us, giving us hope, pointing to Jesus Christ, and marking the way to salvation. It's that invitation that Paul writes about to all join and sing the hymn in Philippians 2 that Jesus humbled Himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted Him and gave Him the name that is above every name, so at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and the glory of God the Father. Father Brian was interviewed a number of times as he worked there at Ground Zero. And the interviewers would ask him about the people who came to the cross. <clears throat> Father Brian said that all kinds of people came, all faiths, all nationalities, Jews, Hindus, Buddhists, Muslims, non-believers. They were all drawn to the cross to seek out God's peace and comfort. And he said that old cross, he says it took all the pain, it took all the sorrow, it took all the, the, the loss, it took all the grief. And the people we just were able to just lay their burdens down at the foot of the cross. God's peace and comfort that we find at the cross is not a talisman against tough times. The cross is not a good luck charm. Rather, it symbolizes a way of life. Perhaps even our own sacrifice, maybe our own service, 
the name of the crucified Savior so that the words of Christ in Luke chapter 9 verse 23 Jesus said if any want to become my followers let them deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me for those who want to save their life will lose it and those who lose their life for my sake will save it what does it profit them if they gain the whole world but lose or forfeit themselves friends the way of the cross is never easy never was meant to be but the way of the cross is true and following this way we find true joy and fulfillment salvation is not just an end times alternative to judgment salvation is not just being saved from the saved from eternal death because salvation is a present hope and comfort in this life that's offered to us day by day even sometimes moment by moment as we live this life some of the workers a lot of the workers at ground zero were welders they were cutting apart the twisted iron they were undoing what heat and gravity had done to the frame of those towers and they would take some rest breaks welders any welders out here well, these welders they, they could have just sat still as they they took the rest the welders at ground zero they spent time cutting replicas of the cross out of some of those I-beams hundreds were cut out and they were carried or they were set up as personal devotions reminders remembrances something they could hold in their hand and seek God's comfort and peace because there is something special in holding a cross there's something that helps us focus our prayers to God a few months ago Pastor Ron was in my office over there and I, I had a hand cross on the table and Ron picked it up and he, he held it and didn't quite fit his hand and the angles were too sharp and the size was wrong and I said well Ron I'll make you one I'll make you one and several years ago I went on a walk to Emmaus I've told you about that and one of the little gifts we received were hand crosses this hand cross fits my hand perfectly it's kind of smooth and maybe some rough places but ah I've held this cross more than one time. It sits on my desk as I, as I pray. and uh, So I took this cross and I made a template. And then I made a cross. And another. And another. And another. Cutting, shaping, praying, sanding, varnishing, waxing, and praying some more. And I, I couldn't stop. And so I prayed with Lord God. How many, Lord God, how many crosses should I make? And Lord God said a hundred. Start with a hundred. So I made 100 hand crosses and I started giving them to folks that anybody would ask, they could have a cross. Once in a while I would come across somebody who needed a cross and I gave them one. God just, <coughs> God's working. I kind of like the man who was in my office last week uh, came to my office to, to sign some legal documents. And there was a pile of crosses on my, my table. He, he started looking at them and you know, his eyes were drawn away from what we were doing to that pile of crosses. And I got to talking and uh, he said that he was a Hindu man, he was raised Hindu. But we got to talking about uh, our understanding of God and how God transforms us, how God enters into our lives, how God takes this world, takes humanity, and wraps it together. And that was a common point of our faith. So he started looking at the, the cross, and there's some scripture on there, so he started reading the scripture from Matthew, and he says, well, there's more, isn't there? There's more, isn't there? And I said, yeah, let's get the Bible, and let's read some more around that scripture. So we got the Bible out and we read. When he left, he had a cross with him. He was holding 
that cross. Maybe it was holding him. I don't know, but I know this. I'm convinced that God has something in mind for that young man. So, that's the power of God working through Jesus Christ and working with this symbol of his sacrifice. That's the power of God in our lives. Folks are still asking for crosses and uh, so I've made some more. And it's kind of funny as I walk around, I see a plank of wood. I don't see the plank of wood. I see how I see the crosses that can be made from it. Uh, Janice is starting to wonder about my sanity. <laughs> I find myself wondering uh, what stain I might use, what varnish I might use, what wood I might use. And so I've been rushing home the last few weeks so I could go to my shop and I could work. Uh, we were having a staff meeting the other day and was talking about the ministry of the cross and uh, uh, I said, I don't know how many I'm going to make. And Andy said, well, Bill, maybe God's called you just make them until folks don't need them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that was a revelation and I think it's true. There's some crosses up here. I hope that you take one with you. Uh, I hope that when we finish this service and everyone's gone, this this uh, altar is empty. Uh, there's a piece of paper here with a list, and uh, if they're gone, uh, just put your name there. I, I've sent crosses to a lot of people, so uh, I don't think Home Depot and Lowe's are going to stop making wood. <laughs> they're not going to run out, and I don't think I'm going to run out of prayers because as I work the wood, as I hold the crosses in my hand, finish them out, I pray over each one of them. Every one of these crosses has been blessed and prayed for so that the person who's holding this cross will know that, gosh, God loves them, Jesus loves them so very much. Just when you pray, just know that God's grace is working in your lives, the lives of the people that you're praying for. Lots of scripture that I could read, but let me just share this in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. Paul wrote, Praise be to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion, and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all of our troubles so that we can be a, that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort that we ourselves receive from God. So sometimes we pray for ourselves. Sometimes we pray for others. And that's good and that's right. Paul wrote in Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. He said that God made you alive together with him. When he forgives us all of our trespasses, erasing the record that stood against us with his legal demands, he set this aside, nailing it to the cross. So friends, we have been invited by our Lord Jesus Christ to take our burdens, nail them to the cross, and forevermore be free of that sin. James wrote in chapter 15, chapter 5, verses 15 and 16, he wrote, The prayer of faith will save the sick, the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. We don't need a cross we pray but we pray we pray for ourselves we pray for each other when the World Trade Center memorial was completed the cross was moved back there despite the objections from the atheists despite the lawsuit that they filed despite it being an ugly piece of wreckage in some eyes the cross was moved back to where it needed to be at ground zero somebody had Probably a welder. They put up a rough plaque on the cross and it said, Founded September 13, 
2001, blessed on October the 4th, 2001, temporarily relocated on October 5th, 2006, will return to the World Trade Center Museum, a sign of comfort for all. And Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Amen. Amen.